So I read verse 19 in Romans 5, that there's an obedience of a one out there that might constitute me righteous somehow. Now verse 20, now the law came in to increase the trespass, but where sin increased, grace abounded all the more. So that as sin reigned in death, grace might also reign through righteousness leading to eternal life. Now, now we have number four in a text, eternal life. And what I want you to see is how it was achieved. Verse 21 again. As sin reigned in death, so Adam's sin caused a reign of death until death is conquered. As sin reigned in death, grace reigns through righteousness. Now, the question is, what does that mean? Is this righteousness in verse 21 the fruit of the Holy Spirit in the life of the believer or the righteousness of Christ on the cross wrought out objectively for me and imputed to me by grace alone? That's a big difference, a very big difference. And the answer is, it is the righteousness imputed to me. And here's how you can know that. The logic of the next chapter makes no sense if the righteousness in verse 21 is the real, lived-out, spirit-wrought righteousness of the believer. Because the logic goes like this. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? That question would never have arisen had he just said, grace is reigning in your life to produce more righteousness. You would never think of saying, well, then shall we sin that grace may abound? Huh? I've just said grace is reigning in your life to produce righteousness. That's not what it means. What it means is Christ has obeyed perfectly. God has a righteousness in his son that by grace can be counted as yours, yielding eternal life. And they hear the truth. You mean it's not my righteousness? It's his righteousness? And by grace alone, it's counted as my righteousness? Then... Let us sin. That follows. That follows. It's a, it's a stupid question, but it's a plausible question. The other one is not plausible. This is plausible. If it's his righteousness, not mine, and he's willing to let me have it, even though I'm a sinner, then magnify that grace. Sin on. Now, all of chapter 6 is Paul's way of solving that problem. He does not solve it by saying the righteousness of verse 21 is my lived out righteousness. The righteousness of verse 21 is the righteousness imputed to me by faith alone and thus gives rise to the question, but sin, that grace may abound because I get the righteousness from another. <laughs> 